Hello my dear friends, you are on the Military Summary channel and today we will discuss the situation in Ukraine on the 31st of August. Today we have a lot of very interesting updates, so let's start. We can say that today is the third day of Ukrainian counter-offensive operation on the south of Ukraine. Today we have a lot of updates from the front line. Let's take a look at our front line, let's take a look at the Russian sources map. You see that there are a lot of icons, a lot of updates, a lot of progress. The Russian sources map has been updated and uh, they, are, they are giving us updates very fast, even if the updates if not in their favor. So let's start and let's discuss. We can split the entire area, entire south Kherson district in, into five pieces, into five front lines. The first one is from Alexandrovka till Sadpakrovsk and Chernobyl This is the first front line, this one. The second front line starts Chernobyl Podi and ends at Snigirevka, this one. The third front line starts at Snigirevka and it ends at David Brode, this town. This is the front line, the third front line. The fourth front line starts from David Brode and this front line adds, ends at Vesakopolia, this one. And the fifth front line starts at the south from Vyskopolye and ends on the Dnipro river. There are very heavy clashes all along the front line. Some front lines is the fake front lines where the Ukrainians are trying just to fix the Russians or pin them down to force the Russians to change their focus and so on. On other front lines the Ukrainians are trying to penetrate the front line, to break through and to establish and to get control or liberate some towns from the Russians. So let's discard. First we're going to discuss the first front line from Alexandrovka till the small town Ternovopode. This small town Ternovopode was taken by the Ukrainians during the previous two days of counter-offensive operation. Let's take a look at the western sources map. By the way, the western sources map is not updated. So, as you can see, this town Ternopode, according to the Western sources, is still under Russian control. But the Russians are saying that they lost control over this town, and the Ukrainians managed to establish control over this town during the previous days of offensive operation, counter offensive operation. During uh, the Russians were forced to retreat in direction of Zelenogai, and now they have some fortification there, in direction of Shmitova, this one, in direction of Kisilovka. This is their main Russian position. That was some kind of, not a fake, but it was rare, like the edge position and their main goal was just to spot the Ukrainian uh, enemy attack, to report about this attack to, uh, to the mainland, to main forces, and then if they're possible to hold the enemy and if it's not possible to retreat and not to get into close combat because the Russians first of all are trying to save people. So the Ukrainians get this down. And during these days, they were trying to develop their bridgehead in this area in any single direction. Uh, their main position, their main um, goal of forces who was located in Ternopod was to pin down the Russians that located in Zelenogai, in Shmitova, and in this entire area. Why did they do this? Uh, because the Ukrainians were trying to crack and to storm Kisilovka. They were trying to attack this area from many sides trying to crack this net because if we take a look at this map you're going to see that Kisilovka is the final town in front of Kherson. So if the Ukrainians are able to take Kisilovka then the next stop will be the edge and suburbs of Kherson. So for the Ukrainians this town is very important. This town might bring the Ukrainians uh, like a very big significant media victory. So that's why they concentrated on this area trying to uh, crack this net, trying to get this area uh, and the Russians now were forced to move on more reliable position. Uh, at 6, 7 p.m. of local time, there were no updates about the result of this battle. So I suppose that today or this evening, the Minister of Defense will give us new updates or we're going to find out some updates from the local uh, forces, from the local people who is in, on the ground. If we are talking about Alexandrovka, the front line is stable. By the way, according to the Russian sources, this town, Alexandrovka, is under their control. The Ukrainians were trying to storm this town from the north uh, during this small neck and from the northeast, from this side as well. But the Russians managed to hold their position, so I suppose that that wasn't some kind of very 
a hard attack, heavy attack. That was some kind of fake attack and the Ukrainians were trying just to pin down and maybe to change the focus from the main directions. Now let's talk about the area between Ternopode and, and Snigirivka, this one. This front line is stable, no updates, nothing. The only update we got uh, somewhere uh, at of 2 p.m. that Ukrainians from Kisilovka, from this small town, were trying to develop their offensive operation in the direction of Blagodatne. But the thing is that the Russians are saying that uh, Ukrainians, uh, um, the offensive group was consist of 100 soldiers and six tanks. But the Russians are saying that those soldiers was very unprofessional. First of all, the Russians are saying that those 100 soldiers were attacking this area like just like an unordered mass. Uh, it was it, it and their opinion of the Russians that it wasn't professional soldiers. And another thing that they were attacking in the full hate. So the Russians are saying that they defeated this group and their their position in Blagodatna is very stable from the Russian side and there is no problem. Furthermore, the Russians are saying that they attack Partizanska, this small town in the north, using artillery and rockets. And as far as I understand, there was some kind of ammo, ammo or shell depot, and the, the shells detonated in this area. There were a very big explosion in this area. If you take a look at this map, you're going to see this, uh, this area. This, if, if you can see this, it was the detonating of some shells and some ammo in this area. Now we are moving to another area, one of the most important front line on uh, the Lazova Andreevka bridgehead. Now we're talking about this area. First of all, let's update this map according to the current situation from the Russian side. According to this update, you see that small town, very important town, Bilogorka, and maybe even uh, some south uh, west part of David Brody, this town under Ukraine control. But if you take a look at the Russian sources map, you're going to see that uh, at least David Brody is under Russian totally. And uh, as you can see, Bilogorka now is under Ukrainian control. This map has been updated just a few seconds ago because even a few hours ago Belogorka was still under Russian control. So during this not less update, during these days of the offensive operation, the Ukrainians managed to develop their bridgehead. Uh, they had control over Lazova and Andreevka. A few days ago, like at the beginning of this special operation, the Ukrainians announced that they established control over Suhoestavak, this town. That was like the result of the first day of the, of the Ukrainian offensive operation in the south. If we're talking about today, the Ukrainians achieved more success in this area. And today we got update that Ukrainians established control over small town Kostromka, this one. And uh, somewhere at, um, after, like uh, at, at 4 p.m., we got another update that Ukrainians developed their offensive operation in direction of Bruskinska, this one. And some sources are saying that Ukrainians managed to um, take uh, some suburbs of this small town. Uh, also, uh, the Russians are saying that Ukrainians managed to um, cut this road. This is a very important road. Let's mark, update this map as this area was uh, taken, cracked and not tracked, established fire control by the Ukrainians. Uh, so, as you can see, uh, the Ukrainians um, achieved success. Now we can see that there is small back in this area. So, now as you can see, the real uh, picture in this area. Uh, this area near David Brod is under Russian control and the area between Stachov, um, Suhoi Stava, Kostromka and Bruskovka is under Ukrainian control. As you can see, they're trying to, um, to split this area into pieces, into parts, and uh, their main goal to establish control over the road T2207, this one. This is a very important road because this is the only road that leads, goes from Berislav or Kherson in direction of David Brod. And they're a very powerful Russian group in this area. And now, as you can see, the Ukrainians managed to cut supply of this area. And now these guys, we can say, is uh, appeared in some kind of operational encirclement. Or very soon is going to appear there. If the Russians are, um, are not planning to start any counter-offensive operation trying to reduce. But anyway, the Russians are saying that they're shelling this area heavily, trying to reduce the Ukrainians as much as possible. And according to the Russians, they're saying that 
Um, the Ukrainians lost up to 30 armored vehicles on this bridgehead while this uh, operation, like to establish, to take control of um, Suhostava, Kostromka, Bruskinska. So this, and this is very big losses, but as I understand, the Ukrainians are not counting their losses. Furthermore, the Ukrainians were planning to develop their offensive operation. It was like noted this morning from Lazova till Bilogorka. But as you can see, by this evening, we got a day that Bilogorka also has fallen and the Ukrainians established control over this town. As you can see, the Russian source map has been updated. You see like the real picture that Ukrainians developing, develop, developed, develops, and they're planning to develop their uh, bridgehead in this area. And of course, their main idea in this area to cut supply roads of the wood brother furthermore if you take a look at this map you're gonna see that there is it's like a fields and there is not much roads all these black small lines is the roads but this one was the most um, important one because using this road the russians were uh, supplying David Brody, Mal Alexandrovka, Velika Alexandrovka, very powerful fortification on the north furthermore then these roads were heading is heading to Arkhangelska uh, and Vysokopoly i Olgina. According to this map, these towns still on the Ukrainian control, but according to the Russian sources, uh, these areas, for now, these towns is in the gray zone, because this area used to be under Russian control, but for now, these small areas in the gray zone, the south one is under Russian control, and Olgin and Vysokopoly controlled by two parties. Like the Ukrainians managed to enter this area. If you remember, we discussed that these um, towns in some impressional circumstances, but we will come back to this town very soon. So, as you can see, the Ukrainians managed to and cut the line of support there are a few local roads uh, in this area but now we see that supply shoulder becomes became much bigger than it used to be before the ukrainians managed to take this town with big losses but anyway now there is a very big risk from the russian side to lose velika alexandrovka david brody because uh, we see problem we see the problems but now let's discuss the front line between this bridgehead from David Brody to direction of Vysokopoly. As I told you, we discussed that Ukrainians are attacking in this area from many directions. And uh, uh, we know that the, um, the Ukrainians managed to establish some operational encirclement. But the Russians are saying that they are still there. They are still in Vysokopoly, in Olgina. They are holding their position. And they're keep fi they're keeping fighting, and uh, the Russians are not planning to give up. But today we got a very important update, another important update, that the Ukrainians, and with the help of foreign legion, managed to enter Arkhangelska. This one, they haven't established entire control over this town, but the Russians are saying that they managed to take at least. 50% of this town and now there are heavy clashes in the town and now this is a very big problem because if the Ukrainians are able to push the Russians from Arkhangelska that means that forces the Russian forces in Olgina in Vyskopolye in this case will appear in not even in an operational encirclement but in tactical encirclement and Believe me, there would be no chances for these forces to leave their position. I don't think that the Russians are going to allow the Ukrainians to do this because they have artillery, airplanes, helicopters and so on. But anyway, this is exactly what the Ukrainians are, are doing and are planning to do these days. So this, this is the most critical area. Because if we are talking about uh, David Brody, yes, the Ukrainians managed to achieve some success to develop the bridgehead, but there is no encirclement. The Russians are retreating uh, like with... You know, with uh, a full with like uh, with full line without any problems without any um, like uh, th places where the Ukrainians are able to encircle the Russians but if we are talking about this area as you can see um, there are critical situation and of course now the Russians they need to do something to um, throw more forces to bring more reinforcement with one purpose not to allow the Ukrainians to encircle these forces and of course this situation increases the Russians losses because now they can't just defend themselves. Now they need also to counter, to do some counter-offensive operations, trying to stop and pin down the Ukrainians in this area. So, situation is not very good, mm, believe me. Another important update, no updates, by the way, from the area from Vysokopolya to the Dnipro River. This one area is totally stable. As you can see, the, the Russians are trying to pin down the Ukrainians, not to allow them to develop their offensive operation, but the Ukrainians, maybe they're not even doing this. Now let's talk about the report of Minister of Defense of Russian Federation. We got um, just one update from this area. 
um, the Russians are saying that they gave us the numbers uh, of three days of offensive operation, but if we will take just the difference between the previous two days and today, I see that Ukrainians lost up to 500 soldiers in this area and up to 45 armored vehicles. It's not just tanks, it's there are a lot of different types of vehicles I'm talking about. And also the Russians are saying that at the area of Suhoi Stavak, this one, 57th uh, Brigade were defeated in this area. So I suppose that mainly these 500 losses from Ukrainian side during this day belongs uh, to this 57th Brigade. Uh, as we can see, the Ukrainians are not planning to stop their offensive operation. They will develop at least till the 8th of September, until the meetings of the Ukrainian vendors. Uh, yes, do uh, do they able to develop there something? Mm, the question is not correct. The, cor the correct question is that the Ukrainians must develop something to, cho to show something to their vendors and to achieve more weapon because without weapon the ukrainians are not able to do anything in this area because there was a lot of updates from the front line from the ukrainians that they are saying that and they managed to take some position and they're saying that ukrainians attacks uh attacked their position more than few hours and the soldier from some trenches were saying that the ukrainians didn't do even a shot in the in the russian direction so uh, the ukrainians attacking in this area without any artillery support and without air support as well so just tanks armored vehicles and infantry massive massive ground attack it's not a very easy job believe me but there is no other way how the ukrainians can get more um, the vendors more supply from their vendors if we're talking about Nikolaev and Odessa today we got a lot of updates about the lines of uh, some um, that's this um, some services people were a lot of wounded pe people were transferred in direction of hospital so it's a terrible terrible picture and that's it about her son area about the Ukrainian counteroffensive operation another important update are coming from Pieski the Russians are developing their offensive operation there and now they're trying to crack the bridge if you take a look at the russian sources map i'm talking about uh, two bridges on the west side of pieski this one there are two bridges this is the first bridge and this is the second bridge and today we got a lot of confirmation of this that the russians managed to take this bridge and now they're storming this bridge and this farm this small area and the russians uh, believe me, uh, the Russians. as soon as the Russians are able to establish control over this area, and I suppose that soon we're going to see this, uh, all military experts are saying that from that moment the Russians will be able to bloom the pesky flower and to develop their offensive operation in the direction of Vadziane, in the direction of Pyromaiske, in the direction of Nivoiska. And that would be a very big problem for the Ukrainians. There is no more updates about from Uglidar, from Marinka, the front line is stable. The same picture we can say about Bakhmut, Artyomovs, so there are very heavy clashes on the west side of Kadima, uh, as if you remember, the, the Russians have already announced that they established attack control over this town, but the Ukrainians uh, are not planning to surrender, to give up, because they understand the value of this town, so that's why they are sending more and more enforcement in this area. Even if we are talking about, particular about this area, we got some updates from this town, from town by the name of Drushkovka, this one. According to the Russian sources, they attacked the 10th Brigade. 10th, as far as I remember, it's Mountain Assault Brigade. This one, Mountain Brigade, this one. There, this Trushkovka, and there was some some, warehouse, some headquarters or maybe their um, rotation position or something like this. And as a result of that attack, this brigade lost up to 50 soldiers and 9 armored vehicles. And the same situation we got from the town by the name of Karlovka. Uh, the town Karlovka is located in this one, uh, it's 56 uh, mechanized brigade, this one, uh, as you know the Russians are cracking this net, we just discussed this, and the Russians attacked the reserves of this brigade, and as a result of that attack, this 56 mechanized brigade lost up to 40 soldiers and 12 armored vehicles. If we are talking about our Izum bridgehead, there is no changes, if you remember yesterday we discussed that the Ukrainians are moving like endless uh, trains of equipment, armored vehicles, but they haven't started anything yet. 
The only important update are coming from Kharkiv. Today we got more and more updates from this town. As you know, the Ukrainians are doing some special operation inside the town, trying to spot the Russian um, people, Russian persons, the people who is working for with Russia and so on. But the thing is that uh, the Russians uh, discovered a very interesting update. The thing is that nobody knows what is going on in Kharkiv. The thing is that there are very um, powerful and wide underground uh, in this town metro line is very powerful and the russians spotted and discovered that ukrainians are moving endless uh, number of tanks artillery system everything they have uh, into underground systems so nobody knows what is there nobody knows the number but the russians understand that the number of ukrainians in underground their armored vehicles maybe is endless it's like it's not like endless of course but i think that hundreds of armored vehicles is in the underground system of kharkiv so uh, maybe this is the reason why the russians also are saying about some preparation of kharkiv offensive operation because they do have possibilities to hide and as you know the russians uh, stopped shelling this town because they understand that you can't reach the most important, the armored vehicles and artillery in this town because it's the all these systems are very deep underground. And that's it for today. Military Summer Channel reminds you that we condemn any violence in Ukraine. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to my channel. Put your likes. Join my Patreon. And have a good day. Thank you. Bye bye.